May 16, 1942, I think it was, that we were told um, to assemble in a particular place. We knew we would be taken away. I was 17 years old. I was a senior, let's see, was a senior in high school. We were well integrated into the communities in, on Vashon Island. Were you mad or scared or how did you feel about the thought Confused. of... Confused. Confused. Where is my loyalty? You know, my parents were from Japan and I imagine their feelings were very conflicted because they came to this country because this is where they felt that this would be the best place to have a family, raise a family. As the Pearl Harbor took place, you know, it just dashed all their feelings of possibilities. What's going to happen to us? We will now be considered the enemy of the state. I mean, so that's kind of the way my brother and I felt. Well, who, where are we? He and I, we're citizens, but our parents are from Japan and Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. My brother and I, we didn't know what we were. So it was a real scary time. We were going to have to leave home. We didn't know how long we would be gone. We didn't know what kind of climate we would have to adjust to. But would he please buy eight large suitcases? Because there's four of us in our family. We would put in everything that we could imagine needing while we were gone. One pair of shoes two pairs of socks, <laughs> two bunches of underwear, a couple of blouses and a couple of skirts. I mean, how do you plan? We, we had to take a coat, a sweater. We didn't know what kind of climate we were going to be in. I'm going to take this little radio with a portable radio. That was the one luxury item. And that was the one thing that I did that helped us the most because we could, you know, listen quietly what was going on around us. And we left the house and as I look back, Frisky, our dog, and Kitty the cat were sitting on the back stoop. I'm walking away toward the highway tears rolling down by Frisky, by Kitty. You know, it was just real hard for me. And here we are each carrying our suitcases. And we walked about a half a mile north toward the Vashon town where the big army trucks were there waiting for us. And we saw the soldiers. It was difficult when I saw that they had guns. And I thought, okay, they could kill us now if they wanted to. So we kind of looked at each other and we had decided we're not going to make a disturbance. We're going to go. And they drove us down to the dock. There were some people, white people, and they were less than polite. I mean, swear words and get out of here, you goddamn. You know, I mean, the whole works. And I realized then how much we as a people were hated. And, and I felt we hadn't done anything, but as the ferry pulled away into the sound and our friends were on the dock crying and I was on the ferry, bye, bye, and not knowing if I would ever see them again. And there was a train, an old train, 
that was waiting for us. Train windows were white, so you couldn't see out. But people outside couldn't see in as well. So it, it was a strange journey, packed in with people we didn't know. They were all Japanese. We were going, 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 and it was getting hotter and hotter. <clears throat> and I remember at one point I fainted because it was so hot. So now we are in, what, near Death Valley in California. When they finally opened the door and I could look out, there were rugged mountains. Um, it was arid, desert. And I thought, where are we anyway? And you know what army barracks look like. Yeah. Barracks, 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 barracks. As we looked, we could see rows, barbed wire. We could tell the guard towers and people, guards in there with machine guns. Um, searchlights. Oh, yeah, oh. searchlights that went 24 hours a day. And the apartment, when you look inside, and there's nothing but plywood, 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 and windows with no glass. I mean, it's just the frame for the window. Do you see any parallels between that feeling and maybe today? Like any comparisons to how we're divided politically today over some of these executive orders. Do you see any parallels to what you went through to what you see today? It is so easy to feel righteous, you know, on my side, whether you <laughs> are really righteous, if you, whether you really are correct or not. It has so much to do with one's own personal feeling about one's relationship to each other, to the country, how do you tell whether you're loyal to the country or not? How do you demonstrate that? We're all human beings. We all want to love our family. We all want to have work, meaningful work to do. There are things that transcend um, loyalties that are created artificially during times of war. It's foolish to think that we're all that different. We're not. Do you feel like the country will move past this or heal in some way? Yeah, I do. Because I've seen it in my own life. 